Hello friends and welcome back to my crafty space. My name is Crystal and in today's video I am going to be putting together another story using the May Stories by the Month kit from Allie Edwards. Now this story was prompted primarily by this chipboard piece here that says home love. I really liked the idea of telling a story about the things that we love about our home and doing it on a really large scale. So I'm going to be working on a 12 by 12 canvas here today. I've got a textured white cardstock as my background piece, and then I have printed my photo at 12 inches by 8 inches. So it is, um, no, it's sorry, it is 11 inches tall by 8 inches wide. I didn't need it to go all the way down to the bottom because I am going to be cutting these pieces apart. I like how these almost look like bricks is what they made me think of. So I'm going to line these up at the bottom with my text already in it. And then um, that way the photo won't need to go all the way down. So then I could just print it on an eight and a half by 11 piece of photo paper, uh, which saved me a little bit of, you know, a little bit of my larger paper. I could just use this instead. Now I also thought that these hearts would be a really fun addition to this spread. So I'm going to be doing something a little bit whimsical, I suppose, on this spread. So my plan is to have my photo here on the left to cut these pieces out and line them up at the bottom, and then to draw some lines here to make these almost like a balloon, <laughs> a, a thing, a bunch of balloons that are going here next to the photo. I don't know why it made me think of balloons and Maybe that doesn't make a ton of sense to put with a photo of my house and reasons why I love my house, but why not? I thought it would be really cute and something fun to do. So that's what we're going to do. We're going to make balloons here and, um, you know, celebrate the rest of this. I may also find some kind of pattern paper to put down the middle here just to create some kind of um, like bridge between the right side, this balloon section, and then the photo here on the left. Um, so I might just go into my stash and see what I can find there to add as just a tiny little strip, maybe like a quarter of an inch or half an inch there, maybe just a quarter of an inch. Anyway, you guys, I am just going to go ahead, put you on fast forward and dive right into this, this spread and see what we can do and how we can get this to come together. So let's go ahead and get started. To get started on my spread for today, the first thing I'm going to do once I make sure that my photo is positioned where I want it to go is to go ahead and draw out some lines from the bottom of the hearts and the bottom of those chipboard circles down to the bottom of the page, I suppose. So what I'm trying to make this look like is a bunch of balloons and the balloons would all be anchored at the same spot so then it's just trying to finagle my lines for the balloon tails to all meet up at the bottom without being too close together and without being too far apart because ultimately I want to take these sketched lines and stitch on top of them with my sewing machine to help me add a little bit of texture onto the page. Now it does take me a few attempts to get this right so I went ahead and skipped over a lot of that because it's just a lot. So once I have this the way that I like it, I will take off all of those bits and pieces and just kind of keep them in the line of where they're going to go. That way, once I have the line stitched on there, um, I just, I know which pieces go where. Then I'm grabbing over my sewing machine. This sewing machine, I get a lot of questions on this one. It is a beginner sewing machine. It's one that we actually got for my daughter to help teach her how to sew, but the size of it is perfect for paper crafting. It's like 12 inches long, so it's super small. It fits right into my square cubbies, and uh, it's a no-nonsense type of sewing machine. There's a back stitch on it. There's no auto threader, so you do have to thread it yourself, um, and it doesn't have like a million stitches, but you don't need a million stitches. It has the ones that are important, a straight stitch and a zigzag stitch, which are pretty much the only two I use when it comes to scrapbooking. Um, so it's perfect. It's really, really perfect for these paper craft types of projects. And eventually I will teach my daughter how to sew on it. Um, we just, we haven't yet. 
So I did go ahead and stitch along all of those lines that I drew earlier. Once I have all of the edges trimmed, I'm just going to erase along all of the lines because I did draw in pencil so that I could erase it and I just wanna get rid of as much of the shadowing as possible. There's still going to be some because I can't get rid of it all. I stitched right on top of it. And I'm actually okay with that because it helps to add to the dimension of the stitching itself. Then I am going to get everything positioned back on the page just to make sure that it all looks good. I love the way that these balloons turned out. I think that they are so awesome and have such a great like dimension and texture and, and just they add so much visual interest to this page. I did want to find some kind of pattern paper that I could put in between the photo and the balloons. I found this one here, I cannot remember where it came from if it's um i'll have to look it up i can't remember if it's maybe a maggie holmes or if it's a chamel paper or it could even be um it could even be a vicky Booten. it actually might be a vicky Booten page but but i like the way that it has the rainbow in it i like that it has a lot of the same colors that you see like in the home love the home love has a red and a pink in it and both of those are in the rainbow so i just think it looks really nice and that is what i'm going to put there plus i think it adds a little bit of something to have the degree of separation in between the photo and the embellishments like just to have something there to help anchor the page I took the four by six journaling card next, which has all of these tiles on it, and I'm going to trim them out. It takes me, again, a couple of tries to get these just right because I, I knew that they would likely go all the way across the bottom of the page, but I didn't realize that I was going to have to trim like directly next to the black lines of them in order to get them to fit side by side without overlap. So at first I left a little bit of a white border around them and then I trimmed that shorter and then ultimately I trimmed it completely off so that they could line up together. I did go ahead and print my journaling on that journaling card first too, just as a heads up. If you don't know how to do something like that, I have a tutorial down in my description box that can help you learn how to add text to your physical journaling cards using both Photoshop and Microsoft Word. So if you're not a Photoshop user, there's still an option for you. It's just a tiny bit trickier, but it still works. So uh, now that we've got everything here pieced together, let's go ahead and get it adhered down. So first I'm going to add a little bit of adhesive to the edge of my photo. I am using double-sided uh, score tape from scrapbook.com. I believe this one I just put on is a quarter of an inch um, thick, but there's a quarter of an inch and an eighth of an inch. They're both really awesome. And I love them because they stick down super strong. Then I trimmed that strip down to um, 11 and a half inches because that's what I printed my photo at was eight inches by 11 and a half inches. And that way I could make sure that everything was adhered straight when I added the edge to the side. Once I have that done, I'm just going to add my adhesive all over the back of the photo. Again, just using that double-sided adhesive because I know it's super strong. I don't have to worry about it falling off. And then we will stick that here on the left side of the page. Part of the reason why I printed my photo slightly shorter was because one, I didn't want to use uh, my, my big photo paper. So I have um, 13 by 19 photo paper and I could have printed this eight by 12, but I I just figured that since the bottom is going to be covered up by these tiles, that I could just print it on my smaller paper, which is eight and a half by 11, and just have a section that I had to trim off the side instead of using the big paper. And it worked out just fine. So now I need to go ahead and get these adjusted on here. Since the bottom section of those is cut off because of you know, on that journaling card, the top two and the bottom two, they interacted with the side of the page. So I wanted to make sure that the other pieces that are going all the way to the side also are at the same level. So I'll get those adhered down and then we can turn this whole page over and go ahead and trim off any of the excess. And that way, everything is totally even. I love the way that these tiles mimic the concrete 
um, like blocks that you would see at the bottom of many houses or sometimes there's brick at the bottom of houses but I just I loved that it just felt like that to me or you know how sometimes there are the um, like cement what would I want to say like tiles that you would put or brick tiles that you would put to line a garden it felt kind of like that as well for the hearts, I am adding more of that score tape to the back of them and then sticking them down where they go on the lines. And then obviously the chipboard has a sticky back to it. So I can just remove the backing and stick those down as well. And then that is essentially going to be what this, you know, how this page comes together, which is really super fun. Um, as for my story for this one, all I did in those journaling bits was I talked about the things that we love about being home and that we love about our home in general. It was just a fun way to really highlight some of the things we love about our house and then, um, you know, get a, a huge picture of our house in here. I feel like we don't always document our homes. We usually document what happens inside our homes. So it's nice to have a picture of the outside as well, you know, for if any day we move, then we have a page like this that just shows where we all came from. So we'll get this one stuck down here and then that will do it. All right, friends, that finishes my spread for today. I think this one is so fun. So like now you can see what I mean by the balloons with the hearts and these like blobby wonky circle titles. I just think that it's fun and um, whimsical and just light and airy. And I love having this at the bottom too that feels like the bricks at the bottom of the page that talk about why I love my house and um, just super fun. I hope that you guys have enjoyed seeing this spread come together. If you have, I would love a thumbs up on this video down below. Make sure you hit that subscribe button while you're there if you haven't already so you can catch all of my future crafty videos. I will be back again later this week with a Project Life spread and a Story Kit Crush spread. So hopefully I will see you in those videos. Until then, have a wonderful rest of your day, a good start to your week, and I will catch you all in the next video. <laughs> Bye friends.